I thought I would just take a quick uh, compound angle formula and um, if you'll just join me take a piece of paper and a pen and let's work through this together. Um, we have got one or two uh, callers with long questions which we'll keep for next week Tuesday when we're on air again. Right, um, let's look at what cos 4 theta would look like as an expression in terms of theta. Now earlier on I discussed the three formulae regarding the cos double angle formula and we looked at the fact that cos can always be expanded into three different formulae and depending on the nature of the question you'll make the decision of which formula to use based on what you've got on the other terms um, on where, whether it's a fraction or whether it's an expression without a fraction that type of thing. So for now, I'm going to express this in terms of just that 4 theta is just 2 theta plus 2 theta. And so I'm, I'm then going to be able to work with an expression involving 2 theta. I can rewrite this in terms of 2 theta. And hopefully, at a later stage, we'll be able to rewrite this in terms of just theta. Now, if I chose my formula for my double angle, then it could look like, let's just tidy this up, it could look in three different ways. In fact, just, oopsie, we're going round, let's write it in the center over here, and I'm going to express cos 4 theta in terms of what it could be equal to. It could be equal to 2 cos squared Half the angle would be 2 theta minus 1. That would be one formula. It could be 1 minus 2 sine squared 2 theta. Or it could be cos squared 2 theta minus sine squared 2 theta. So in order to expand cos 4 theta in terms of theta, I could have three different pathways. I could use the cos formula, I could use the sine formula, or I could use the cos and the sine formula. And these are really dependent on the nature of the question. So the question might say, write it in terms of sine only, or write it in terms of cos only, or write it in terms of cos and sine. And so I would approach it differently based on what the instruction was. If I was given, if I, it was open-ended, then I could pick any of these. All right, now if I chose, and I'm going to choose this white one, if I chose to go this route, then I would be able to now expand my cos 2 theta, because what this is saying is 2 cos 2 theta, which I want to square, because that's what the square of the ratio means, and now I want to be able to simplify that. So again, cos 2 theta can be expanded by halving that angle, so that would become 2 into cos 2 theta's formula is 2 cos theta minus 1. And I must remember 2 cos squared theta, sorry, minus 1. And I must, I'm getting stuck here with these brackets. I don't need these. That's my ratio, whoopsie, that I am squaring. And just to get back to my pen, there we go. That's squared, and I'm going to minus 1. So I now have been able to reduce it from 4 to 2, from 2 to 1 theta, and now I just do the algebra around this. This is 2 into, I square my binomial, it's a binomial squared, so it's the square of the first, so it's 4 cos to the power of 4 theta, minus 2 doubled is minus 4, cos squared theta, then I've got this minus 1, and I've got this minus 1 outside. Actually, minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So then we get 2 times uh, 4 is 8, cos 4, cos to the power of 4 theta, minus 8, 
cos squared theta plus 2 minus 1. And we can tidy it up as 8 cos to the power of theta minus 8 cos squared theta plus 1. So I've been able to rewrite the identity for cos for theta in terms of cos. You just to go back. You could also do it in terms of sine or in terms of those two. I'll leave you that as a challenge for next week.